Hi, I'm going to show you how to connect to an Azure SQL managed instance using Point to Site VPN connectivity. So I'm just going to start by looking at the resource group where I've created all of these resources together, including the managed instance and the virtual network. Now, if I go to connect to my managed instance, first of all, let's have a look at the networking setup for it. So if I go to networking, we can see here that the public endpoint has been disabled. So we can only connect to the managed instance privately. And if I go and connect via the connection string using SQL Server Management Studio, when I click connect, here is our failed message showing that there is a problem network related. And the reason for this is that my computer does not have connection to the virtual network or indeed to anything in Azure at the moment. There is no VPN set up or anything. So I need to go back to my resource group and to the virtual network itself. And I need to set up the VPN connection to this virtual network. Now, you can also set up peering from network to network and you can set up VPN connection to a hub and then use this as a spoke. But in this case, I'm just going to connect the VPN directly to this virtual network. One other thing to note when we look at the address space is that the address defaults at 10.0.0.0 slash 16. Whenever you create the virtual network at the same time as you create the Azure SQL managed instance itself. So ideally it is recommended to create your virtual network first and then point to that when you're configuring your Azure SQL managed instance. But in this case, I've created both together and this isn't going to cause a problem. So I'm now going to go to the subnets and we have one that is created already 10.0.0.024, which is where our managed instances will sit. I need to create a new subnet and the subnet I need to create is a special one called a gateway subnet. Now you can only create one of these per virtual network and this subnet is used to set up my VPN connection. So the default is 10.0.1.0/24, which is fine, and I'm going to go with all the remaining defaults on this. And once that's done, I can now go and create a new resource called a virtual network gateway. Using the same subscription, the resource group will always be the same resource group as where your virtual network is sitting. In terms of the name for this gateway, I'm going to call it Azure VPN and just keep it simple. Region, I'm going to leave close to my managed instance, which is UK South. The gateway type is VPN. The VPN type is root based. In terms of the SKU, I'm going to use one called VPN GW1, which is a fairly basic one, but it's enough for what I need. If you want to have zone redundancy, within your virtual network gateway, then you will need to have one that ends in AZ. But in my case, VPN GW1 will suit. The virtual network is the one where my managed instance sits, which is this one. In terms of my public IP address that I need to create, a basic one is fine. And I just need to give that a name. So Azure VPN dash IP is fine. And for everything else, the defaults are okay. So at that point, I'm going to review and then create my resource. And this resource takes roughly around 30 minutes. Once the virtual network gateway has been created, we are ready to configure it. So we're going to go into the resource and we're going to go to point to site configuration. And it tells us here that it is not currently configured. So we go to configure now. And the first bit of information we need to add is an address pool. Now, this isn't the subnet that we're going to be connecting to in the virtual network. This is a, a different address pool. So for this one, we need another private address pool. And the one I'm going to use is 172.16.25.0.0. In terms of the tunnel type, there are several options. The one that I'm going to use is this one, IKE version 2, which is used for Windows clients, Linux clients, mobile devices. 
and SSTP, which is also a fallback option as well for Windows devices. And then in terms of authentication type, in terms of the trust between Azure and my computer, I'm going to use Azure Certificate. So this now gives us a root certificate space to be able to provide a root certificate that we can then use to connect. So to progress this, uh, this part, I need to go to PowerShell and I have two commandlets already set up ready to run. The first one is going to create a root certificate, which I can then use for Azure. And the second one, based on the root certificate using this variable, is going to create a client certificate that I can then export and import onto other computers so that they can all connect to the same uh, virtual network using point to site connectivity. This is all using a self signed certificate. So Ideally, you want to use a certificate authority to do this, but in this case, I'm just going to use a self sign. So I'm going to create the root certificate first. And now that I have that, I'm going to use that to create my client certificate. And both of these have been created in my user certificate store. So once they've been created, I can now go to certificates and go to manage user certificates. So now if I go to my personal and certificates folder, you can see both of these certificates now exist in here. So I'm going to export both of them. So the first one I'm going to export is the root certificate. So I go to right click all tasks and export. I don't want to export the private key, so I'm going to leave that as no. And I'm going to use base 64 encoding. I will save as Azure VPN root. Then I click next and finish. And that is now exported successfully. So I'm going to do the same now for Azure VPN client. This time I am going to export the private key. And I'm going to keep everything the same here. And I'm going to encrypt by password and then save to the same location as Azure VPN client.pfx. Okay, if I go to my location, we should see that both of the certificates have exported successfully. So this is the one that I'm going to use for Azure, and this is the one that I will need on each machine that I want to connect. It's already on this machine, so this one will be ready to connect as soon as the VPN has been set up completely. So now I'm going to open up my root certificate in Notepad, and I'm going to copy everything between begin certificate and end certificate. Then I'm going to go back to my virtual network gateway configuration. Under the name, I'm going to call that Azure VPN root. And for the data, I'm going to paste in my certificate data. Once I've done that, I will click save. Now my uh, configuration has been saved. I have the option to download my VPN client. Okay, the software has now been downloaded. So if I go to my downloads folder, I'm just going to move my file in with my certificates. And then I can extract it and install it. So once it's extracted, Extracted. I just need to install it. It comes with a six, uh, sorry, with a 32 and 64 bit um, installation file. So I'm going to use the 64 bit installation. It is going to install it onto my computer, and that's done. So now I can go to my VPN settings, and I should find that I have a new VPN configuration that is named exactly the same as my virtual network. So if I go to connect to this, and it doesn't usually take too long, and yet it is now 
connected successfully. So at this point, I should be able to go back to Management Studio and attempt to reconnect to the same Azure SQL Managed Instance. And this is how you connect to SQL Managed Instance from on-premises with Point to Site VPN. Mm -hmm.